Hi there, uh, here's another hand building project and today we're going to make a cup, a uh, darted cup. Um, so I've made one a little bit earlier. Um, this cup is based on a teapot that I did, but I need to have, uh, I need some cups to go with it. This one's already been bisque fired, so it looks a little different. Um, but I wanted to have some of the same elements that I had on this teapot on the cups. And it was these darting here, but rather than have a cup darted like that, I'm sort of doing an inverted version of the, where the darts land. So this is the cup here. I'm gonna set this teapot aside. So um, let's see that. And I'm gonna actually set this cup aside. I'm keeping it under plastic because I don't wanna completely commit to it being done. So I'm keeping it um, pliable. Uh, it's a very warm day and I'm working with porcelain because that's what the teapot was made out of, but I've gotta be super careful that things don't get too dried out. So I'm keeping all kinds of plastic around and just keeping things covered. So I made this using a template and this is the template for the teapot. It was a little bit of a um, little thicker card stock. And to make this, um, well, I'll show you how I make the, for the cup. I decided that the cup should be about three quarters the size of the teapot. So I'm making, I'm gonna make this and show you how to make this at three quarters the size. It just so happens that three quarters of this size works out to basically part of a regular letter size sheet. So this is my template for the cup. So I will just tell you that this is three and three quarters tall. And then this part, they are two and three quarters, which just again happens to work out to one fourth of the 11. So I already measured this three and three quarters. And now I'm just going to cut that. Actually, I'm going to tear it. That's going to be faster. We got to go fast because we're making a video. We don't want it to be too long and you can always stop and rewind. Boom. That part. Then I'm going to take this, fold it in half. Link. Fold it in half. Okay, and now all I need are my darts. And I really eyeballed these. Um, I will say that the first time I did it, I didn't cut them quite as deep and I wasn't quite as happy. So the next time I went a little deeper because I wanted my, the darts to have a little more presence on the side of the cup. So in order to get them symmetrical, I'm gonna sort of fold this one more time. Not, not gonna crease it. And then I'm going to cut my dart, eyeballing it. So you don't wanna go too far in unless you wanna like a really tiny base because as you could see, if you cut it in too sharply, you'd end up with a very tiny base to your cup. But now, ta-da, I have a template. All right, so um, on this table, I'm mostly keeping the tools that you have that I gave you, and over here is tools that I have found elsewhere. So uh, I'm just trying to keep those kind of separate. Now, for this cup, this cup is right now about 12 and a half ounces. Um, I was able to make all the parts out of a pound's worth of clay, but um, I'm gonna use a little extra 
because it just makes it easier to get the slab that you want without trying to um, cheat and you have to work less hard if you start with a little bit more. So this is my scale, 19 ounces, so I think it's a pound and a quarter. All right, do my plastic close by. I want this out of my template. Um, so I'm gonna sort of try to get close to that shape-ish. Everything that I uh, roll out when I'm making the slab is going to get longer that way. So I'm not going to go any longer than this. And I got to make sure that I can get my width out of this. So I'm going to kind of start the slab going in that direction rather than just put a big ball down and roll it out. I'm going to start to shape it. I'm being careful that I don't go any thinner than the thickness of my um, guide sticks. Don't want to poke a big hole in there because then when you roll it out, uh, it'll be already thinner than what you want. So keep your template close at hand. And I am using this, this side, especially for this first initial work where there's so much mushing into the, um, into the canvas, because uh, I don't want it to stick to the stickier side. I gotta make sure it's wide enough because it doesn't get as much squishing out as it does squishing long. And if my edges get really funky, I can sort of square them up. Okay, now I'm gonna use my roller. You can use it, to, well actually this is a table leg. You can use a wine bottle or something to roll out if you don't have a rolling pin. Okay, so I'm starting in the middle and you can see, well, it does squish out a little bit on the sides, just most of it gets moved that way. And I'm not going to completely try to thin it because I need to kind of keep checking to make sure that I have that's going in the right direction to get my template made. I'm going to square up that edge too because these are getting a little rounded and I don't need that. I'm going to wing it and not use the height guides for a moment. Scary. And you could be more wasteful than me and just make a big old slab, but um, I'm trying to be judicious as usual. Okay, a little more width there. These are nice thin cups. So the, the height guides are a quarter of an inch thick. And I would say for the stoneware, that's probably good. For porcelain, I might be able to go a little thinner. Well, it's looking pretty good, looking pretty good. A little sparse in these corners here. So here's something you can do if the roller's not getting you in the exact direction you need. I'm gonna liberate this from this. Flip that, peel the fabric off. And then this is as valid as rolling it out. You can sort of stretch it like that. Don't squeeze it, you gotta be sort of gingerly. You don't wanna get big fingerprints in it. Ooh, that got me a lot closer. I have to be mindful. It's like, ooh, I could cut it out, but if I cut it out of this, 
if you can see that corner right there and that edge those edges are not really viable you want to not have it being cut right into your edge because they're usually a little thinner so i'm going to do that one more time so it's kind of slapping it like that nice all right gonna roll it and then i'm gonna cut it out and again i was trying to get it like right on okay the next thing you do when you're um, done with the rolling pin and the guide sticks things you do with slabs is you always want to compress your slabs so i'm going to run a credit card or some kind of rib you could use the metal ribs i gave you press it that way compress it that way and you really should do it both sides so i'm going to flip it one more time now i can do the other side Okay, then I'm going to cut out my template. That looks really good. So kind of press it down and cut it out. I'm gonna go really fast. come back to the darts get this right under plastic don't crunch it up don't crunch it it'll be easier when you go back to use those parts if you don't crunch them up like you can fold them like that but don't try to mush them because you don't want to capture a bunch of air in it I'm putting them in the nice thick plastic and now I'm gonna join the darts to that cut the darts out Right. Get those under the plastic. That's in the way. All right, now I want to transfer this to something that is a little more portable. So I'm gonna take a piece of newspaper, cover it, take my cardboard from pizza, and I'm gonna flip this whole thing. And it's a, it's a long piece, so I'm gonna use my yardstick to support the piece when I flip it. Like that. Okay, now this will be my work surface. Um, but with a little bit of magic, I actually already have one of these that I made a little bit earlier because it's a little more set up and it'll be easier to manipulate. If I started working with this right now, it's quite floppy and it would be a little frustrating. So I'm gonna set this one aside. And if you think you're not gonna get to it, if there's any chance you're not gonna get to it, then you would put some kind of plastic over it. I'm gonna go ahead and put the thin pl plastic on top of it. And I'm going to set it over there because I'm not going to use that one again for this demo. Okay, so now um, for this, this is, the, this is the bottom of the cup. This is the top of the cup. So um, this, is, this cup, if you remember, this is our template. And now we're going to put it together like so. And each of these darts are gonna to join together. So we need to bevel 
these two sides because they're going to go together. We want those beveled and we need to bevel the darts. So I'm going to say this is my inside. And so I'm going to bevel those and there's various ways you can do it. Um, you can cut them. So let's see, these two are going to go together. Thinking this out with my template. So they should be, this is my inside, they should be cut at this angle. Same with this one, cut at that angle. And each of my darts should be cut at that angle, that angle. So I'm going to cut the first one, just for fun. And this is nice. This is this is a good setup. Oh, I hope it's. We'll see. Uh, so I'm cutting that angle, or you could just mush that angle. You could take your rib and again mush it. I think I'm going to go ahead and cut these with the knife. So there's my angle. It just gives you more surface area with the, the things that you're trying to join. Okay, and of course, all these little bits, keep track of them, might get to use them again. Okay, so now the easiest way to do this is to work upside down. I'm gonna use a little bit of water. And so this, <laughs> This is the top of my cup. So I'm going to smooth that now. And that's the inside. And then I'm going to turn this upside down. And so it is definitely um, firmer than the one that I just made. So that's nice. And I'm going to start bending it into the square and whoops, 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 whoops. Hold on, must score. All those bevels, they've gotta be scored. All right, so I'm going to, so this is the serrated edge, which you all have. If you don't ever have a serrated edge, you could score with a needle tool. But I do have a serrated edge, so I'm gonna use that. Or that. These are a little more of a challenge to get into, but I can do it. So score all the joins that are going to go together. And I'm going to go ahead and score the bottom right now too, because why not? I'm not going to score the top, the rim. Okay, now I'm setting it upside down and bringing these together. Boy, this shot sat up really fast um, because it's so warm. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to put a little bit of water in between these. And in fact, uh, so you can use slip. You can also use a little vinegar. This is just white vinegar. It helps with joining. Just a little bit using a brush that you have. Not in the kit, but you probably have a brush in your house. Toothbrush. So I'm gonna put vinegar on all the places that I scored. Okay, now. Goodness. Mush those together. And because it's on cardboard, I can spin it around on that. 
Mesh those together. Mush those together. And then finally, now that's interesting. I did not um, bevel these as easily and they just don't want to naturally go together as well, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna just mush them more. Or you could do the right thing and really bevel them. So when I push them together, I'm not exactly pinching. It's like my fingers kind of overlap at that seam, sort of pulling the edge together. And usually I do this on a side that I can see rather than what you can see, but. Okay, so just be firm as you get them together. So I got them all kind of basted together and now I'm gonna make sure that they're a little more thorough. What I'd really like is a smaller piece of cardboard so I don't have to, I'm gonna transfer this over. Oh, there, that's more portable. Okay, so I've got the walls together. Now I need to reinforce at least this seam. So I'm going to flip this right side up and I could just turn it over or I could take, I could make a flipping machine, put them like this, turn it over like that. So if you can see inside, that seam really needs to get a little bit of attention. So I'm going to give it, I'm going to make a little coil for it to reinforce that particular seam. It's a good practice. Sometimes you can get away with it, but it, once again, just how wet everything is, I mean not how wet, how quickly things are drying, you kind of need to make up for that by... Um, being extra careful to get things to join. So if your clay is really wet, it just sticks to itself. If it's not really wet, sometimes it can separate. So I'm using this side of the vinyl this time because it won't take water away. And I'm gonna make myself a very tiny little coil That's more coil than I need. I really need only the height of the cup. And then you could put a little bit of vinegar on that and you can roll it in there and then you could score it. And then it goes in here So I'm laying it into the cup where the seam is. And I'm going to move it, my finger across. You're not pushing it in. You're actually dragging the clay across that seam so that it reinforces it. It's getting it basted in there first. You can't see. And I'm just gonna snip that off, that under plastic. So I'm gonna do a quick and dirty with this cause I don't wanna take too much time. So I can use this, again, you're not trying to push it in like that, you're kind of drawing it across. So I'm gonna twirl that a bit. And I am supporting the outside while I do that as well. Side, sideways, go sideways. Okay. And I really wanna move clay across that too. 
that seam is so much more visible than the first one I did. The first cup I did was a lot wetter, so uh, that seam disappeared pretty quickly, but I'm going to use my rib to draw the clay across it. And I'm going to go kind of diagonal. And this, this um, since it has a seam, the seam is going to be somewhat visible, so don't go too crazy unless you really want to take a lot of time to try to make that seam invisible, but um, it's, it is there. Okay. So just finishing off. If you keep it nice and moist, you can come back to a little bit more, but I tell you, if things are drying so fast, every time you camera's off, I cover it in plastic. So, um, now we're going to make a floor for it. So I am going to put it under the clamshell while I make the floor, the other parts for this cup. And we're going to start working on this side solely because of the drying out. So these I put together earlier. I'm going to try to make sure that I don't get any um, air holes in them. So I'm going to put it together in a way that kind of squishes any air out. And this is, so my floor, weight wise, it's about two and a quarter ounces. More than I need, but I'm gonna go that way a little bit, and then I'm gonna flip it and go that way. And I do believe that is big enough for this little floor, but I'm gonna make it a little wider because I think on mine I made it thinner anyway. And of course, use your rib. You see any little cracks on that, you don't want to dig. So if the crack goes that way, you don't want to dig in there. You want to draw the clay across, always drawing it across. All right, so now I have a floor and I need to create a handle. And I'm the way I'm making these handles is by slab. So don't need much. I'm going to say two ounces. I need two ounces worth for the handle. So is it two ounces for the floor? Do three ounces for the floor, two ounces for the handle. Got to get this out of my way. I know I'm rushing, but it's video. All right, so for this handle, I'm going to give it a little bit of a taper. Oh, see, can you see these uh, creases? They're on the other side. So I'm going to run my rib across like that. Make for a healthier slab. And do the other side. And I want to taper it. A little so I'm actually going to cut it because my teapot kind of had a taper on its handle under plastic and each of that and then I'm going to smooth its edges. I've got a little bit of water on this. Flip it over, smooth those other edges. You do not want to have to smooth your edges once it's stuck to your cup. So now's the time. And then I'm going to put my floor and my handle 
shaped into the shape that I want onto this board and then set that aside. And it is going with the other piece that's wrapped in plastic because I have a pre-made one, which boy oh boy, they are firm. So now I'm bringing the cup back. I'm going to put the handle under plastic again. Keep it from drying any further, I hope. And now the cup sets onto the floor. So the cup acts as your template for your floor. And I'm going to cut right around i'm just going to draw first where it sits on there and because it's not completely symmetrical i'm going to make a little mark how about right there on the cup and right there so i know those two go back together set the cup aside i have to extend the mark into the part that I'm not going to cut off. And then I'm going to cut that off. I know I keep bringing up how firm and dry everything is, but some days are like that. Um, okay. So where's my register mark? right there and my register mark is there so that's where they go together I before I set them together I need to score I'm gonna score the bottom again even though I did it before so I'm gonna score that and then score along this edge there went my register mark so I'm gonna leave that towards you and there's my register mark and I'm going to put a little bit of water or vinegar. On all those edges. So now these two go together. Almost going to be easier to do it uh, upside down. I'm going to turn it upside down and do this. So my mark is here. Kind of because it kind of goes undercut like that. So it's hard to see when it's right side up. Okay, I'm going to press them together. And then I'm going to take a credit card and push them down at an angle together, trying to join these. A little bit of water just on the edges, just, just to smooth things out. Now I've got a couple seams in here at the bottom that I'm well aware of might need some reinforcement, especially with how much drier these are. Can you see in there? So I'm going to, I could, do those little coils and try to get those down in there. Um, but I'm going to use a rounded, I'm going to use this rounded back of the brush. And I'm going to take a little, just wet it barely with the vinegar and paint that in there. I'm not um, using it as like a, a patch on the outside. I'm just moistening it. And then I'm going to sort of swirl this around. 
my brush is not very stiff. You could use a stiffer brush just to kind of move the clay across the seam. In fact, while I'm there, I'm gonna, most of the little dart seams seems, seem pretty good, but a couple of them look a little, like they could use a little attention. So I'm just gonna swirl that around there. If you put a bunch of um, soft clay, like slippy stuff like that, and you just place it on the top, that's gonna crack, so it needs to be compressed. Okay, that looks pretty cute. Now, the other thing that ha this teapot had was a little bit of a belly. So I'm going to put a little belly on the cup as well. This rim needs a little attention right at that corner, just needs a little smoothing. This will be the kind of where that seam was. It'll be the weaker point if you um, don't attend to it and compress it. All right, so now to belly it a little bit, I'm gonna take my hand inside and kind of press out, but I'm going to support, I'm certainly gonna support that seam while I do that. There's a little belly, a little belly, a little belly. Doesn't take much. And I, um, my, my rim is kind of rounded. I think I'm gonna square it off. I kind of like the squared off look a little bit. Not like sharp squares, but just, yeah, I like that. Just coaxed it in a little bit. All right, so what's next that we gotta put the handle on? And I have the handle right here which is very, very stiff at this point. So luckily it fits and I don't have to bend it a lot to get it on there. So I am going to, I'm gonna put it down about there. I want, I want it below the rim, like I have the other one. So I am going to mark where it sits. Uh, you know what? I kind of want to put it closer to the seam that exists. And let's see, the other one I did, the seam was on the right. So let's do it that way. Okay, I'm going to mark where it goes. And then I'm going to score that. And then I'm going to score where this goes. I mean, where this attaches and score where that attaches. And then I am going to put vinegar on it. Okay, and then place that and give it a push. I'm supporting the inside of the cup. I'm sporting it down there and pushing together. And then it needs some blending. So I'm going to use the back side of that to blend it. Um, again, so dry that this, this sort of, um, Vulnerable cup is going to need to go under plastic and just sort of equalize. Um, I would prefer to have it all be a little um, wetter, but sometimes it's hard to get it just right. Okay. Press those together. Okay. So looks pretty good. If I want to do anything with it later, which I could come back to it, I'm gonna to have to put it under plastic. So I'm gonna bring this one I did earlier back so you can see it. Get all this stuff out of the way. I would like to put it on a piece of cardboard there. 
And then I can see, oh, do they look like they're kind of in, you know, at least cousins? Sort of. All right. They're going under plastic. Um, and I can manipulate them a little bit. Not much. But I, because the dryness of mine, which you probably won't be running into um, as much, hopefully, um, I'm going to just... When I'm ready to let them, when I'm ready to stop forming them, I'm still going to leave them under plastic a little bit longer just so everything dries more evenly and it has a chance, there's a better chance of not cracking. So that's your darted cup. Enjoy and um, yeah, happy hand building. <laughs>